magnesium and duct tape. Here you can say I've got the magnesium bars fairly well used. I had it a very long time. And the duct tape is housed around the kit housing. Uh, this has been designed specifically so that the the duct tape, the magnesium bar, the fire steel, uh, the striker and the, some jute twine which catches a spark are all contained in one place. It means that you can take, there's about a metre of uh, duct tape on that particular housing and it means that you can make it into a little boat. Uh, I got the idea of the duct tape from Wilderness Innovations um, but the difference is instead of striking, uh, instead of scraping your magnesium onto something else you scrape directly onto the duct tape. Uh, it has the advantage of uh, being able to stick to the duct tape. It also means everything's dry. Now the scraper I'm using is a little Rolson survival tool. It was very very cheap and since I've got it I found that it is extremely good at scraping this off. Um, up to that point I hadn't really used the, the magnesium bar that much. It, it was a pain to get it to light um, and sustain it. You needed an awful lot of magnesium uh, to get any kind of sustained burn. Um, but the tool in question, it's been sharpened a couple of times now and it's just very very good at getting a nice pile of magnesium shavings as you can see. The When, when you flick a spark onto this the duct tape catches fire as well and it's the duct tape that sustains the burning. Now when we set up the fire uh, it had been raining, in fact this area was covered in snow and, and so what we did was we lined the pit with a bit of uh, birch bark that had been out in the sunshine all day and then these uh, we'd found a, a log of hazel um, split it obviously to get at the dry inner wood and then uh, did some feather sticking which was a very satisfying process in the, the nice warm sunshine this is so that we guarantee that when we've got flame we get things going up on top of that we put dry pine uh, this was straight off the tree, in, even though it had been raining. Of course it's dry because it's been wind dried. The pine that I'm doing at the moment, that I'm breaking up at the moment, I'm trying to make sure that the density is right so that you're getting enough air in the mixture, otherwise you, you smother the fire. And this particular fire, that is based on a trench fire, means that you can keep a, an air gap at all times. Uh, I work a lot with kids and uh, what you tend to find is once they've got the flame they drop a handful of the small sticks on the flame and put it out. Okay, And as you can see even though the, the duct tape is being um, battered the magnesium is still there, it's still going. Okay, A few burnt fingers later and you can drag everything forward and then it starts to catch fire very very easily and again all of this is dry because it's been on the trees. Uh, we haven't picked anything off the floor. Obviously we wait for it to, to burn. As soon as I see flames coming through the top of there um, then I add the second layer and the second layer is, is sticks that we've pulled out of the trees. Again we haven't pulled anything off the floor. It would have been pointless. Everything was so wet it would just have given an awful lot of smoke and taken a lot of hassle to get going. So here comes the second lot and you can see just hold it there for a few seconds give it a chance to catch um, but with this stuff it didn't really matter it was nice and dry and as you can see that's going up nicely lovely frames coming out of the top in fact it gets a bit warm and it gets a bit too warm and David has to stand up to get away from the heat A wonderful feeling getting the fire going but as you can see he had to step out of the way a bit. Now it's time to get ready because we're going to make some toast on this fire and use a, a special gadget that I make every time I need some toast up when I'm camping and as you can see lovely fire to get us going. Thank you for watching and I hope you tune into the next vid.